morning journey happy new year happy new year's eve we're so glad you guys are here with us to close out this year and you know today we're going to be talking about some of the things from this year and uh before we get into all that though i want to invite you guys to stand with us we're uh we're going to sing some songs and turn our hearts to god and just thank him and worship him for making us new
So take me to the riverside, take me under bad times, I need you, oh God, I need you, oh, your forgiveness is a sweet, sweet honey on my lips, it's like a song.
pray with me? Father God, we just thank you so much. And we come here this morning just to worship you and to praise your name, God. The name of your son, that beautiful name, Jesus, God. The name that you made powerful and wonderful beyond all others. In this time of year, as we've been celebrating his birth, I just pray that you'll also keep in, in our hearts and minds the, the purpose behind that birth, to give us a light and a symbol to follow, God. We just thank you for giving us this life and this life together with each other. And we can pursue you. Amen. You guys go ahead and grab a seat. Twenty twenty three, it's a wrap, or almost, just a few hours to go. Uh, hey guys, good morning. Welcome to the journey. My name is Mark, and we're so glad you guys have joined us today. Um, last Sunday of the year, last day of the year, and uh, hopefully you guys had a great week with Christmas and some celebrating. And how many of you are kind of like me, like you weren't sure what day it was, like a little bit kind of messed up. Today is Sunday, just in case you didn't know. Uh, but we're glad you joined us, and, and I thought this is a great way uh, for us to end the year, for those that could be here today, um, to just celebrate what, what, who God is, really, and focus on Him and what He's done in our lives. I'm sure each one of us could look back on this last year, and maybe there's some highs, there's some lows, but uh, the, the thing to remember is He was with us all the way, Right? He was with us all year long, and we hope that you, you know that in whatever situation you've been in and, and whatever you might be facing, and he'll be with us in the new year as well. A couple things to let you know about uh, today. Um, first of all, if you're a guest with us, maybe you're kind of new around here. First day, been here a few times. If you've never grabbed that guest card in the seat in front of you, go ahead and do that. We put it there in case you sit there. 
Um, we just kind of like to make a little quick connection with you to say hello and uh, give you a gift. If you drop that card at the Next Step Center lobby after the service, we don't harass you. You just grab the gift and you're on your way. But we just want to welcome you in that way. But we're glad you guys have joined us. Uh, also, want to just say thank you to those that have given to the journey, um, either all this last year or recently to the Hope Christmas Project. And it, again, it takes all of us uh, giving and, and playing a part in that way. I um, want to th- say thank you uh, to you for that. If you want to give today, this would be like the, the year-end giving thing. And if, like, if you want to get it in by the end of the year, to, it would need to be in today. Um, and the ways to give, you can do the boxes in the back, the donate page on the website, or Venmo. But I also want to mention today we're doing um, another different kind of offering. We do it on the, whenever there's a fifth Sunday of the month, we do a benevolence. And that's today. And so if you want to give uh, a little extra something, uh, benevolence goes towards people in our church that may have a need or struggle with a, a bill or just face a rough time. We, we can do that for each other. So you can give in the same way, but there'll be a couple people in the back with baskets, and you can drop something in those baskets specifically for the benevolence today. Um, but I also want to let you know of uh, some other things coming up. Yeah, it's the last day of the year, but I mean, we, gotta, we have 2024 per- planned out and ready to go. We have a new series starting next Sunday. It's going to go for several weeks in the book of Proverbs and looking at wisdom, God's wisdom in our lives as it relates to relationships and money and how we spend our time. Very practical series. We have com- some classes lined up to go along with that. We have a chili cook-off next month with our network teams. Lots of great things planned for us as a church to keep growing together and knowing that God's with us, as I said earlier, is let's, we got to keep doing that together. And so we invite you back uh, for the new year and, and all that's coming with that. Uh, but today, um, we're going to take time to uh, just remember Jesus, because that's why we're here. That's the, the focus of what we're all about here. Um, Jesus in this last year and even Jesus in our lives today. And we're going to kick it off. Matt's going to be sharing with us on video today. So we're hearing from him, and then we'll do communion together in a little bit later. So check this out. Hey everyone, happy New Year's Eve. We are on the last day of 2023. It seems crazy, uh, but tomorrow starts a brand new year, 2024. We're only six years away from 2030. That seems like there should be like flying cars and then like so far in the future, but but we're creeping up on that even. And and as we kind of wrap up 2023, I'm just wondering how you're feeling about it. Maybe maybe you're feeling like, oh, it was a great year, and there's so much happened this year. It was such a good year. Maybe you're feeling like, oh, it went too fast. My kids are growing up too fast. And, and this, maybe you're celebrating this past year because you had great things like graduating or getting a new job or a new house or getting married or whatever it might be. And, and you're looking back fondly on this past year. Or, or maybe you find yourself, on the other hand, where you're feeling like, I can't wait for this year to be done. Let's just get rid of these last few hours of 2023. Maybe this wasn't the best year. Maybe there were some struggles. Maybe you made some mistakes. Maybe you faced some things um, that you'd rather just put behind you. And I know for me, I'm feeling a little bit on the latter side, like like I can't wait for this year to be done. Out of out of, out of the years, this has not been uh, my favorite year of the years that I, I've been around. And... Uh, there's some good things that still happen, like my daughter graduated. And we went on a great trip to Alaska, but you know, like for me, not the greatest year because I started the year off with chemo treatments uh, for the cancer that I was dealing with, 
and I'm all in the free and clear now, but, um, you know, this past year has just been dealing with the side effects of, of the chemo treatments and, and dealing with that. And, and even beyond that, between my wife and I, in the last like 13 months, we had s six different surgeries, nothing major beyond the cancer stuff, just like minor stuff, but just, that's just kind of how the year went. <laughs> it's like, I'm just ready for this year to be done and put some of these things behind us and ready for a fresh start in 2024. And, you know, t today I just want to take a few minutes as we wrap up the year, just to talk about some hope for the new year. And maybe here's one thing to think about. If the lions were good, in 2023, then I think anything is possible for us in 2024. Uh, but beyond that, I think there's so much more hope to be had, no matter what this next year brings, whether it's a year to remember or a year to forget, there's still hope in the middle of all of that. And so we're going to be looking to some of God's words for this hope today. And I want to challenge you as you go into this new year, maybe you make resolutions, maybe you don't, but maybe one commitment you can make is, is to look more into God's words so that you can know him more, so he can guide you in more in this new year, so you can experience more of that hope. I just want to challenge you to do that. As always, we talked to you about the YouVersion Bible app. We're going to have a New Year's Bible reading plan, um, and maybe that's just a way you can start off this new year on the right foot looking for hope. I just wanted to challenge you to make that a priority for you in this new year, and because the words of God give us so much hope, like these words I want to share with you today from Lamentations. Here's what it says in Lamentations 3. 22 through 25, it says, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. I want to take a few minutes and just talk about some of the phrases we see in this passage in these verses so that we can have some hope in the new year. It starts out by talking about how God's love is always there for us. And because of that, we're not consumed. It says God's because of God's great love, we won't be consumed. You know, no matter what we face in life, God's love is always there for us. He is always there for us. It talks about in the book of Romans that nothing can separate us from God. Nothing we could ever do could ever make him stop loving you. Nothing that we ever face can make his, his love not be there for us. That his love is, is consistent. It's unchanging. It's, uh, it's, it's always there for us. It's, it's not based upon how good we are. He loves us in spite of, of everything we've ever said or done. That, and, and his love for us never fails. It talks about that in this verse. His compassions never fail. They're new every morning. His mercies are new every morning. Tomorrow is a new day. Tomorrow is a new morning. It's a whole new year. And with that comes this promise that his mercy and his grace is there for us as well. Maybe in this past year, you found yourself kind of drifting away from God, or maybe making some decisions in life that maybe caused some strain in your relationship with God. Know that his mercies are new for you, that tomorrow is a fresh start and his mercies are new and they're available to us today. And that no matter what we've did in this last year, that doesn't mean he stops loving you. That doesn't mean that his mercy and his grace isn't there for you. No matter how far you've gone away from God or drifted from him, and it's just one step back to say, God, I need you. I want that grace and that forgiveness. His mercies are new. I love that promise that we have. And it talks about in the next phrase that great is his faithfulness. That God is faithful year after year. His promises are always true. He, he doesn't break his promises. They're always there for us. That no matter what life brings, that his promises are there, that he is still loving us with his love that, that's unconditional, that he's still preparing a place for us in heaven for those who put the, their hope in him, that he'll be with us through the valleys. So the, no matter what this, this year brings in 2024, God is going to be there and he's going to be faithful He's going to be available for us. What a great promise to have of some of that hope. I like this next phrase. It says, I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait on him. I like that. They have to remind themselves, and I think that's a good thing for us. Maybe this year wasn't a great year, you know, or maybe in this next year you might have some valleys. We have to remind ourselves, God is my portion. 
I'm going to wait on him. When it says wait, it talks about like putting our hope in him. It means keeping our eyes focused on him. It's, it's, it's trusting in him and his promises to remain true. And it says that God is my portion. The Lord is my portion, it says. So what it's saying is that he, is, he can provide everything we need for our life to be fulfilled. He's the one who is the source of real life. He's the one that can guide us in the right ways to live. So he is our, our portion. And sometimes we have to remind ourselves of that, just like the author of Lamentations here. Remind ourselves and continue to make note, I need to put my hope in him. I need to wait on him. I need to keep my eyes focused on him, even in these hard spots. And it says, it ends with this phrase, the Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the ones who seek him. Like God is good to those. He's good to us. Now his goodness isn't based upon life circumstances. That doesn't mean we won't have um, peaks and valleys. That doesn't mean we won't go through hard times. But God's goodness is not based upon life's circumstances. God is good to those who seek him. Even in the bad, he is still good to us because his love never fails. His mercies are always new. His promises remain. And, and he's still preparing a place for us. A gift for salvation he doesn't take back. His goodness is not based upon life's circumstances. He is good to those who seek him who put their hope in him. As we head into this new year, maybe this is a chance for us just to pause, to look back and say, God, you have been faithful. To look back and say, God, your love has carried me through. To look back and say, God, you have been good to me in so many ways. To remind ourselves that he is our portion and to continue to put our hope in him. I don't know what 2024 holds for all of us. What I do know, though, is that God is going to be good to those who seek him, that he can be our portion, that he is faithful. And so I can know with confidence and have hope for this new year that it will be a good year because his love doesn't fail and his mercies are always new. So this new year, maybe this is a chance for us to remind ourselves and to put our hope in him. I hope all the best for you in this new year. I'm praying that this will be a year ahead where we see God continue to work in and through us as a church. I, I, I hope that this is a year for you to take steps with God, for you to experience more of him and his goodness in your life. I hope for his blessings to be upon you and your families. And I hope that you can experience the same thing that the author of Lamentations is saying here, that God is my portion and his love never fails. And he is faithful throughout all generation. And he is good to those who put their hope in him. I hope that will be your experience in this new year. Let's just pause a minute and just ask God to be with us in this new year. For us to experience his goodness. Will you pray with me? God, we pause right now as we wrap up this new year. And we thank you that you have been with us through the good and the bad of this past year. And as we, as we lean into this new year, we thank you for your mercies that are new. We need those mercies, God. We need your forgiveness. We want, us, we want to be in this relationship with you, and, 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 and it's only because of your great mercy. We thank you that your love is always there to sustain us. We thank you that you're our portion and the one that can fulfill our lives. We thank you for your promises that never fail. And as we go into this new year, we want to experience more of you and your goodness in our lives and in our families. So we look to you, we put our hope in you for this new year. In your name we pray, amen. Your unfailing love, O Lord, is as vast as the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches beyond the clouds. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will meditate on all of your works and consider all your mighty deeds. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, this is my body, given for you. 
do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took a cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will meditate on all your works and consider all your mighty deeds. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. May your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Let your unfailing love surround us, Lord, for our hope is in you alone. Uh, this morning, um, I had a little extra time than I normally have on a Sunday morning because we just did hear the one service at 11. So my wife and I just were drinking a cup of coffee and we said, hey, let's, let's kind of think about 2023 and maybe share some of the, the goodness of God in our lives. And, and we, we shared some different stories and, and some different moments and some big things, some little things, and, and just took some time to do that. But just trying to focus on, on God and his goodness in our lives. And kind of as we, as we talked through that, we were just realizing, you know what, it doesn't matter what we faced, um, good and bad, hard or uh, fun and exciting, that it, it was the goodness of God was the same. And he was faithful and he was with us all the way through. And so I'd encourage you today sometime, uh, maybe you got plans tonight to, you know, big night to stay up till nine o'clock and then go to bed, or, or maybe you're staying up till 12.01, I don't know, but take a moment today and do that, maybe with your family or a loved one or a friend, and just say, hey, let's just take a moment and let's think back. I mean, whatever thing you could do with your kids and your family, like, let's just focus on God's goodness and not let that moment pass by um, to focus on him. But we're also going to take time to really focus on him just in the next few moments together uh, here as a church. Um, I mean, what a great way to end the year together, right, to, to focus on Jesus. And part of this time is going to be with taking communion together. Now, communion is all about remembering Jesus, who he is, and the things he has done for us. You know, Christmas time, of course, we do think about Jesus, and we celebrate the birth of Jesus. And we think about Jesus coming to earth as a baby and being placed in a manger. Jesus a baby, very small and very dependent on his parents. But he did grow up, and he had a purpose in life and a mission, the most significant thing of all, and it was eventually to go to the cross, to die on that cross, to pay for our sin, and to rise from the dead. And there's a verse uh, in the Bible that we share here often that talks about that. It's Romans 6.23 that that tells us something, there, there's two things in this verse, that, something for all of us, that it says is the wages of sin is death. That there's this penalty for all of our sin because we all have sin, we all have it, and, and that's true for each one of us, whether we're young, we're old, we're, we're kind of new here to the journey, we've been here a long time, even though we're all different in some ways, man, that is true for all of us, isn't it? But the next part says there's this gift, of eternal life that God has given us through Jesus. And that is a promise and a gift he offers to all of us as well. Young, old, been here at the journey a long time or just a few to- a couple times or, or, or maybe that, that we're all different, that gift is offered to all of us. And it's a gift of forgiveness. And Jesus is the one that can offer us that gift because he's the one that paid for it. He, he paid for it. He, he paid for it with his life. He sacrificed himself as the wages of sin is death to pay for our sin. And we can never show enough gratitude for that. That can never end. So as we're wrapping up this year together as a church, I want us to focus on him 
and this gift that he has given us. And then we're going to take communion together. And so what we're going to do is we have um, a short um, video we're going to show with just some prompts on the screen just to prompt our time of reflection on Jesus. In, in the first part, you're going to see some of the things that Jesus said when he was on the cross. When he was hanging on that cross, paying for our sin, he, there, it's recorded, there's, there's some things that he said, and you're going to see some of those on the screen. I want you to think about not only what he said, but, but him hanging on that cross, paying for your sin and mine. While he was hanging on the cross, paying for your sin, he said these things. And I want you to reflect on that. And then you're going to see a couple prayers uh, to follow up with that. And let this time just be a moment as you're wrapping up the year, focusing on the most important person in our lives and in your life, who's Jesus and who he is and what he has done. So just take time to reflect on him now. When Jesus had the first communion with his disciples, he took the bread and he gave it to them. And he says, when you eat this, I want you to let this be a reminder that my body is broken for you. And then he took the cup and he said, when you drink this, remember that my blood is shed for you. And to eat that bread and drink that and, and do that in remembrance of him. And so we're going we're gonna to do that together now. And in the back you'll, of the auditorium, on two sides, there's a table back there. And um, there is some bread and some juice. And you could take that bread and dip it in the juice, and then you eat it. Or you could do another way as well. There's also pre-made communion cups. You can grab one of those if you'd prefer to do that as well. But remember Jesus as you're doing it, that his body was broken, his blood was shed for us. And that's why we do this together, to remember him. And um, the band's going to come when I pray. And, and then any time over these next two songs, you can go and take communion. You don't all have to go right away. We have plenty of time, so we don't have long lines. But you can go and, and, and take that moment to remember Jesus. Thank him for who he is. Thank him for what he's done for us. That he, did the, he, he died on the cross and rose from the dead to restore our relationship with him. Let's pray together. Jesus, as we wrap up this year, 2023, we now together as a church pause 
to focus on you. And through the ups and downs of the year, the most important part of this year is that you were with us. And you still have saved us and you still forgave us. And it's because of what you did on that cross. You died and you rose again. And so today as we take communion together, we remember you. We thank you. And we celebrate you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, as the band plays, um, you know, you can stay in your seats if you want or stand and, and, uh, and just head back to the tables and take communion whenever you're ready. Savior, I come quiet my soul Remember Redemption sing The way of life was built For my Yeah.
guys stand with us as we sing this last song this morning?
Thanks, guys. We hope you have a great week and a happy new year. We'll see you next Sunday for the start of our new series.